Now, this is the first module where we're really just kind of explicitly talking about JavaScript. Uh, module two, introduction to JavaScript. Right. So we had um, the client or your web browser uh, goes to a web server and, and requests some sort of file. But remember, uh, along with that file, it's possible for multiple other files to come along with it. So these are all the other resources required uh, to produce uh, your web page. And it's not uncommon uh, in today's um, kind of web architecture or just web applications that there are many JavaScript files uh, that are uh, included uh, in a web page. So what do we put uh, in these JavaScript files, right? So what goes there? What's in there? To remember any sort of information, we need to declare variables. So what types of variables are we going to be uh, leveraging in our JavaScript applications? So I just want to point out there's some, uh, many differences um, uh, going on here. Uh, notice that the on the left hand side we're using the var keyword and we're providing a name. But notice that we're not telling it what type that the variable is. That's something that's very different uh, from uh, than PL SQL. Whereas in PL SQL we'd say uh, we want a, a number um, or we want a um, a variable by the name of num and we want to make it a number we're going to assign it eight right well notice that that whole declaring this as a number uh, variable doesn't exist all we're doing is we're just going going ahead and we're going to assign it the value of eight so what this means is that JavaScript is a loosely typed language in other words um, throughout the duration of having this num variable I could assign it a number, I could assign it a string, I could make it an array, I could do all sorts of, I could, I could be constantly changing the type of uh, the variable. So do be very careful um, that you're using your JavaScript, or you're using your JavaScript variables consistently. And that's a, a cause for many issues or many bugs uh, in a JavaScript application. Um, another interesting thing to look at here is uh, we have a string here and uh, we have my string and we have second string and notice that this one uses double quotes and this one uses single quotes. Uh, Apex or JavaScript does not care uh, which one you use. Uh, you'll see that in most of my examples I will use the single quote uh, because I'm a PL SQL developer as well and Oracle likes to use uh, single quotes. But as long as you begin and end with the same style, so as long as if you begin with a single quote, you need to end with a single quote, or if you begin with a double quote, you need to end with a double quote. Uh, we have Boolean values, so true or false. And one thing that is, this is very uncommon, or this is something that is hard uh, for um, new JavaScript developers to wrap their head around. So I imagine we're going to spend some time looking at this. Um, but in this case, a function can be treated as a variable. So in other words, you can assign some unit of work to a variable and you can pass that around throughout your application. And I, I believe that is why JavaScript has been um, is so powerful, right? Because it's it's a way to to pass around how you want to handle something. So you say, here are some values, and oh by the way, here's the function I want to use to handle that. Um, that's a really powerful concept that we'll explore later on. Of course, we also have array objects. So um, we have an array here with five elements, one, two, three, four, five. And then we also have uh, what's known as an object. These are just name value pairs. These are kind of like um, if you've, in other languages, if you've worked with a dictionary type object where you have a name a, or a key and a value, that's kind of what an object is like in JavaScript.
And the other thing that I, I want to point out, um, this is kind of slightly an advanced topic, but um, I want to, I'm going to bring this up multiple times because I think it's really important. Uh, so this array, it's currently an array of numbers because so it holds one, two, three, four, five. But I just want to point out that that does not necessarily uh, have to be the case. So in other words, let me instantiate an array here uh, so you can, you can see what one looks like. So I'm gonna say my array, it's gonna be equal to, or I'm gonna say var, because I'm making a variable, my array becomes equal to, and I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five. And press enter. Right. Okay, so it instantiated that array with no issues. It made that variable and that was fine. But also what I could do is I could say, well, here's a number and here's a string and here's another number and then here's a string and press enter. And it instantiated that variable just fine. So in other words, this is a multi-type array. It has strings and it has numbers. So you have to be careful with JavaScript and in that you don't just assume you're getting what you're, uh, what you're expecting to get. Right? So there's lots of type conversion and type checking that you will have to write into your code. And of course, we will talk about that.